Have you ever felt like your mood can change in an instant? One moment you're on top of the world, and the next you're feeling down in the dumps. These shifts in our state of mind are at the heart of an important Buddhist teaching called the Ten Worlds. The Ten Worlds describe different conditions of life that we all experience. They're like different channels on a TV, each showing a different program. Just as we can switch between TV channels, we move between these worlds throughout our day, sometimes without even noticing. In the Lotus Sutra, an important Buddhist text, these ten worlds are given special meaning. They're not just descriptions of how we feel, but they show us the potential we all have to change our lives for the better. Let's explore each of these worlds, starting from the lowest and moving to the highest. Number 1. Hell. This isn't a place with fire and devils. It's a state of mind where we feel trapped, suffering, and unable to escape our problems. We've all had days that felt like this. Number 2. Hunger. This world is about always wanting more, never feeling satisfied. It's like being really hungry, but for things like money, fame, or power instead of food. Number 3. Animality. In this state, we act on instinct without thinking. We might be selfish or mean to others because we're only focused on our own needs. Number 4. Anger. This world is about feeling better than others and wanting to win at all costs. It can make us fight with people or try to control them. Number 5. Humanity. This is our normal state. We can think and reason, but we're easily swayed by what's happening around us. Number 6. Heaven. This is when we feel really happy because good things are happening to us. But just like the other worlds, it doesn't last forever. Number 7. Learning. In this state, we're eager to understand the world around us. We learn from others and try to figure things out. Number 8. Realization. This world is about using our own wisdom to understand deep truths about life. Number 9. Bodhisattva. Here. We feel compassion for others and want to help them be happy. We put others before ourselves. Number 10. Buddhahood. This is the highest state, where we're fully awakened to the true nature of life. We feel deep wisdom and compassion for all beings. Nichiren Daishonin, an important Buddhist teacher, wrote about these ten worlds. He said, if you want to understand the causes that existed in the past, look at the results as they are manifested in the present. And if you want to understand what results will be manifested in the future, look at the causes that exist in the present. This means that the world we're experiencing right now is the result of our past thoughts and actions. And how we think and act now will shape our future experiences. It's a powerful idea that puts us in control of our own lives. But the ten worlds aren't separate places we visit one at a time. The Lotus Sutra teaches us that all ten worlds exist in each world. This means that even when we're feeling stuck in the world of hell, we have the potential to experience Buddhahood. And even when we're in the world of heaven, we can still feel anger or hunger. How does this work? Let's use our imagination. Imagine you're having a really bad day. Everything seems to be going wrong, and you feel like you're in the world of hell. But then, a friend calls to check on you. Their kindness touches your heart, and for a moment, you feel grateful and want to help others too. That's the world of Bodhisattva shining through, even in your darkest moment. Or think about a time when you were really happy. Maybe you just won an award or got a great gift. That's the world of heaven. But then you start worrying about losing what you just got, or you feel jealous of someone else's success. That's the world of hunger or anger peeking through your happiness. This idea that all ten worlds exist in each other is called, the mutual possession of the ten worlds. It's a fancy way of saying that we have the potential to experience any of these states at any time. This teaching is super important because it gives us hope. No matter how bad things seem, we always have the seed of Buddhahood within us. In the Lotus Sutra, it says, At all times I think to myself, how can I cause living beings to gain entry into the unsurpassed way and quickly acquire the body of a Buddha? This shows how even the Buddha, in the highest state, 
is always thinking about helping others who might be struggling in lower worlds. Nichiren Daishonin explained it like this, the ten worlds are not separate places existing somewhere in the universe. They are conditions of life that we experience from moment to moment. This means that our life condition isn't fixed. We can change it through our thoughts, words, and actions. But how do we do that? How can we move from lower worlds to higher ones? One way is by chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, which Nichiren taught as a way to tap into our Buddha nature. Another is by studying Buddhist teachings and trying to apply them in our daily lives. When we're stuck in a lower world, we can try to remember the higher worlds and make efforts to shift our thinking. For example, if you're feeling angry, the world of anger, you might try to think about how the person you're mad at is suffering too, moving towards the world of bodhisattva. Or if you're always wanting more stuff, the world of hunger, you could try to appreciate what you already have, moving towards the world of heaven or even Buddhahood. The cool thing about the ten worlds is that they're not just about us as individuals. They also describe the state of societies and even the whole world. When a community comes together to help after a disaster, that's the world of bodhisattva in action. When countries fight wars, that's the world of anger or hell on a big scale. Understanding the ten worlds can help us make sense of the ups and downs in our lives and in the world around us. It reminds us that nothing stays the same forever, bad times will pass, but so will good times. The key is to keep working on ourselves, to keep trying to bring out our Buddha nature.